Okay, hi. Can you hear me? So it's okay. So, um, okay, my name is Hui. I'm a Vietnamese. I'm uh, living in Tokyo, Japan. Who, uh, um, in Tokyo, uh, every time you go into work, you have it pushed in the uh, train. So, uh, I work for a company named Line. Have you ever heard about Line? Oh, it's more than I expected. So if you never heard about this, so please install that, and uh, I know that you will love our cute characters. So uh, beside that, I'm admin member of Ruby Vietnam, and my co-founder is sitecomkevelope.com. So I, I was the Ruby lover. So I was, and um, yeah, I was. So um, <laughs> uh, today I'm going to talk about two main topics. Uh, one is about our team called Engineering Efficiency, and the second thing I'll talk about one of our two to solve our organization scale problem. So what is engineering efficiency? Have you ever heard about this kind of team? Oh, no. No, yeah. Uh, so engineering efficiency is just a kind of team that is like, you have a dedicated engineer who focus on building tool, building anything that could help the other become more productive. So it's like meta engineering set by you build engineering solution for engineers. So um, basically, for, yeah, yeah, as you know, that uh, we are massive and in, invest in this kind of work. Uh, that was a quote I, I took from Peter, a Twitter engineer. So uh, as many I ever know, they, they don't know that dedicate some people to do like productive work that really make the impact. And the hard thing is not, we do not know how to measure effectiveness, right? And the second thing is how to know that what you should do and uh, what, how many people that you should invest in. So how to measure effectiveness? Uh, there are many ways. So basically, the most easy way is like effectiveness is equal to the time you save your engineer from doing uh, trivial and repetitive work, right? So how many engineers that, that you should invest in? Uh, I took uh, the, the Peter. He got a very interesting blog at gigamonkeys.com slash flowers. So you can see in here, see here that for example, if your organization have about 10 engineers, you do not have to devote anybody. So they will figure out how to automate your, their work themselves. But if your organization grow to 100 and 10,000, you should, you must devote somebody to do the work. So we will talk about engineering since the line. Basically, in line, we do anything except raising a salary. <laughs> I, I, I wish I could, but I, I couldn't. Or fix your slow network. Uh, but uh, in fact, we are building in-house deploy system. We are Java shops, so we're building the deploy system that make can make the, the Java deployment easier, can roll back easier. Uh, the second that is my team right now, I'm building an in-house monitoring system uh, because our existing solution does not work without scale. And beside that, we're building many tools that help our college for engineers focus on right code efficiency. And Today, uh, I, I include a very tiny job description here, if you're interested in. Uh, <laughs> well, um, today I'm going to introduce about one of our tools you know, called LineFlow. LineFlow aims to uh, automate our development process uh, and help engineers follow the, our convention without any stress. So let's talk about our development process first. Um, uh, let me uh, introduce the background first. Uh, we have a, a very big mono repo we call Talk Server, which is our core messaging system. Uh, actually, we are moving out from this a few years ago using microservice, but we have to wire some logic like like this, like controller, into the, the mono repo. So we hope to escape from that in the soon now, but not yet. So to make the shared development less risky, we have a very complex development process, as you can see here. To make a single live code, you get to go through all of this. You create a Jira ticket, and you do like some branching, you do some complex uh, rebasing, you release to the beta server, and you make a set. I don't remember that. So, and we have to follow many conventions as well. It's like every time you make a pull request, you have to include the Jira, Jira ID in the prefix. You have to include the review name, the summary, the approval, the milestone, many things. So I feel it's just too much to remember. It, it just, uh, you just want to release a single line of code. You want to add some log, and you have to go to those steps. Just, just too much. But uh, actually, the process is, is needed because we are doing like shared programming, and the produce protected from you, you know, you're aware of each other's work. 
and you like you make it less risky. And the conventions really help us inspect problem. When the problem occur, you know that where the problem occur, and you we ha we do build some tool to inspect that using the the right convention. But it's not should not be painful, right? So um, to make to make it less painful, the first problem is that we have to copy paste many things. It's like the driver ID, the summary, many things to copy paste. So uh, the easy answer is that you automate everything, right? So we decided to desire to for process automation. So um, our tool has some goals. Most, uh, first is uh, must be extensible. It's like uh, when the other engineer want to add some more feature, just should be easy. The second is an important one. It should be step. Nobody want to release the software without any confirmation, or like uh, you you need to know that what you are releasing before you're doing some dangerous thing. The, th the third thing is that it must uh, reflect the domain, uh, which means that you should use the same keyword, the same concept with the, the keyword that your engineer is using every day. Nobody wants to learn something new. And the last one is zero dependency. You want your, con your engineers to use your tool. It's not, it sh must not require any dependency or pre required. So um, we made a very simple CRI tuning goal now. Not because um, I'm in GoFacon right now, but I, I, I really love Go. Yeah, um, in our tool, every steps in our process in here, you, you can see we have the, the very big step here. And every step is equal to a single line of common line. Uh, I can show you some image here. It's like uh, you can create a new Jira uh, ticket with a single line comment. You can create a new local branch with a single line, and you commit with the uh, correct convention, and you can release your software with a single line of comment. Uh, as you can see here, before you release something, uh, I have like open your editor, uh, fill up your template, and you can just uh, uh, fix some typo or something. And finally, uh, we show you the diff before you commit or make a, a real code push. And it's just that you can like release or make a pull request in a few seconds. Um, the implementation is really simple. So uh, we have two concept here. We call it workflow and the uh, sub command. The workflow is just a process itself. It's just a set of comments that share the same concern. Here we, we have the talk server workflow, which is the, the very complex workflow. Uh, we came with our single repo called talk server. And um, the sub command is just represent the single step of the process. It's very simple. So how I wrote that is um, we wrote a very simple wrapper for OS exec. We do not use uh, any exist uh, library like uh, Cobra or CLI because we want to uh, customize many things. So uh, it's just very simple. So uh, each command, is, you can see here, it had a, had a little choice. And we have an argument struct here to uh, wrap for the argument and the executor to map that which command go to which uh, execution function. So as you can see here, when you execute something, you find the correct subcommand and you just call that. Nothing special. So we just solved the automate problem by building very simple CLI tool. But the second problem to come that I just forgot what I should do next. As you can see here, when uh, you have many branches to work on, and you switch from branch to branch, and you just wait to the new branch, and you forgot that what, what did the last thing that you did to that branch, right? Is this release or not? Is this in uh, the beta environment or staging? You just did not remember. So we have a very interesting feature, we can recommend feature that you just call line flow, the talk, the workflow name, and what, and it will tell you what next to do. So the implementation looks very, uh, very simple. First, we need to define some flow order, right? The what command comes next to what command. And we have a very simple DSL right here. It's like you call next function, and you pass the, the command, and you just connect. It's return the flow spec itself. And it's just very simple dependency graph. Um, the flow spec here, you. Uh, he sets the next function to pass the command, and the next up function to return the command next to the command of the parameter. 
and the flow spec struck here we have the like the thing is very simple thing, uh, doubling list uh, we have the, the next node and the previous node to implement the dependency graph well so it's just uh, half of the way so to know what is the last thing you have done so you have to like memorize that that memorize everything right so um, we solve the problem very simple that we just saw every execute command in the uh, live flow dot history is the same idea of the batch history. So um, the history structure looks very simple here. We have the location that you should set the history to, and we have the, the list of command. It has it has the save uh, function to save the command. Traverse is like uh, you traverse the history from the top, and you pass the uh, function to do something with the command. Every, every time you travel to. And we have the last here to return the last command that you uh, have executed. And we have two utility function to uh, convert the command to string and convert back the string to command. And uh, have you ever heard about Pico? Oh, Pico is a very interesting tool that like uh, it has filter out the, the SDDR of every single command. So one of my uh, colleagues is that he integrate like flow with Pico. That is uh, like uh, you uh, you you uh, get on the branch of the current uh, repository and you uh, call the Jira Jira API and you get back the context and you can choose the the branch using the context of the Jira ticket. I think it's a very convenient thing. Okay, so basically the how life flow is built is very simple. Uh, I built the tool in about one week. It's very great using Golang to do that. So um, life flow actually is very simple tool, but uh, if you think about it in patch, if you save your single engineer from five minutes per day, and your organization will be saved about four to one hours per day. And I, I hope that kind of saving will come to my salary, but not. Um, <laughs> And you have to come against this the process. Nobody want to like you first day you came to the company, you want to release something, and your boss say that give you a paper that we uh, writing the process, and nobody wants to do that. Um, what we learned is that Golang is better writing DSL. Actually, uh, I'm coming from the Ruby background and Scala background, so uh, that language is really great at writing DSL. But Golang is like I, I love it verbose, but when you want to, to write some very cool syntax, it's not possible. And it's really hard to develop plugin style. It's like with Ruby, you, you have a dynamic code loader, and it's really easy to write, to write a like, third party plugin. And you just uh, read the, the people repository and you load the code dynamically in, in, your, in your code. But it's impossible. We go along. We, we have something like static library or something like this. It's not really easy to do. Uh, how can I survive in Java shop? Actually, it's not survived yet, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to introduce Golang in my company because we are actually 99% everything is written in Java. But yeah, I'm, 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 I'm trying. Um, <laughs> actually, the IntelliJ, uh, the, the reason that Golang can survive in the Java company is that the IntelliJ Golang plugin is really, really great. It's more than I expected. And recently, we have the Golang. Um, I'm not used yet, but I think IntelliJ did a really good job, and we can use both Java and Golang in the same editor, and it's just awesome. Uh, and Golang ecosystem is great. Uh, in the previous talk, and uh, he said he, um, the speaker told you that it's really great uh, ecosystem. It's like debugger, benchmark, test tool, everything is just awesome. And distribute Golang also is great too. You just uh, package in the single binary, and we have this internal brew system, and you just uh, brew, install, line flow, and everything is done. And finally, Golang is just awesome to make it focus on problem, and you really great at prototyping. We can make our tool in like a few days, and it's just done. So final word, um, how to build a good internal product. Actually, this is the first time I have ever been in internal product team. So. Uh, what I realized is that you must invest some resource. There are no short-term solution. There are no like, scripting that work for a long term. And to build a good internal product, each product must have a good API. So the good API right here is made live flow. It's really easy to make uh, a common like deploy system and common like monitoring system. And finally, you have to be evangelist to your own product or nobody will use yours.
I swear. So, uh, okay, that is. Thank you. Anyone? Okay, uh, so we're ready for our tea break now. Uh, food is outside.